Hi, everyone, and welcome to your module on Keen Observation. Sa apat pong core coaching skill, isa to sa pinaka-paborito ko because we integrate concepts from neurolinguistics programming. Dito po sa Keen Observation, makikita natin bakit napaka-importante na tingnan natin yung body language ng ating coaching in order for us to understand them better. Let's begin with this simple comparison between the GIF on the left and the GIF on the right. Kung kayo po ba ay papipiliin ko, anong regalo ang gusto niyong matanggap? Mukhang nalalaman ko na kung ano yung pipiliin ng majority sa inyo. Kung papipiliin ko kayo dito sa before and after look nitong bahay na to, ano po ba yung pipiliin nyo? The one on the left or the one on the right? What does it prove? We are actually visual people. One over ten of a second is all it takes for others to actually assess us. Even if we do not uncover what's inside, tinitingnan po talaga natin kung ano yung panlabas, yung visual na aspeto. At hindi rin ito nakakapagtaka kung bakit yung iba sa atin minsan nagiging judgmental. But let's use that judgment in a good way for our coaching session in order for us to connect more with our coaching. Alam niyo po ba na sa theory ni Professor Albert Merabian when it comes to communication, sinasabi niya na yung impact ng visual aspect is more than half. And in particular, it's 55% compared to the 38% of the vocal impact and the 7% of the words that we use. So when we communicate, the visual aspect is very important. It's easy for us to be understood more if we can actually see the person rather than just talking to the person on the phone or just by writing them when we communicate. Hindi rin po nakakapagtaka na 65% of learners worldwide are considered visual. So let's begin understanding some important points as a coach for us to observe and at the same time to watch for when we are conducting our coaching sessions. Alan Dudo reminds us that our body communicates as well as our mouth. So we should never contradict ourselves. Kung makikita nga lang po natin yung sarili natin sa mirror from time to time, we will be very much aware with our actions because even if we don't say anything, our body is already giving other people a clear message. The first lesson that I'd like to share with you is the proper handshake. Itong handshake, hindi natin masyadong nagagawa lately dahil po sa pandemic. But this is considered one of the most professional touch that we can do with a colleague. Not everyone is comfortable with a hug. That's why we can actually make the other person feel important through a proper handshake. Pero paano po ba ginagawa yung proper handshake? Hindi po pwedeng weak yung ating handshake. It must be firm, but not too firm to the point that we are crushing the hand of our coaching. Kailangan din po not the tip of the fingers, hindi rin po middle, but it should be crevice to crevice. Kailangan mag-lock yung ating kamay. I would suggest using only one handshake rather than the two handshake because the two handshake can be misinterpreted in some ways. The two handshake in some culture, it's considered political. And it could be also perceived as too friendly. Okay? So pag nakita natin si Kochi, if possible, kung kaya nang gawin, we can use a firm and a proper handshake to greet them. And then, when we talk to our coachee, it's very important that there are no barriers. I would suggest that you don't actually talk in front of a table because the table can be a barrier. In this particular photo, nakikita po natin na yung dalawang tao, they're facing each other. Wala pong barrier sa pagitan nila. 
And if you notice, one of the person is actually doing the forward lean action. Ano po yung forward lean? Yung ating face leaning forward and even the shoulder. This one can actually suggest that we are showing interest in our coaching. Now, it's also important that we show an appropriate facial expression during our coaching session. Hindi po pwedeng poker face lang tayo in order for us to connect with our coachee. Kung kailangang maging malungkot, let's also show that we are showing them that we are also sad. Kung masaya yung kinikwento ni Coach T, we can also use a smile. Eye contact is also critical during coaching session, but Filipinos are actually having trouble doing eye contact. Hindi po talaga tayo komportable na ginagawa yung eye contact. Pero yung eye contact critical siya because it can build trust, it can actually show confidence. But what's the proper way of doing eye contact? Yung ibang tao, hindi nagagawa yung eye contact kasi pag tinignan nila yung mata nung pausap nila, diretso, medyo nakakaduling, and it is actually very uncomfortable. So what's the proper way for us to do the eye contact? What I usually suggest is to do the triangle figure. Okay? So the triangle would be three points on the forehead, the left eye, the right eye, and back to the forehead of the person. So instead of focusing only on the eyes of the person, try to look at the three points doon sa forehead, left eye, and right eye of the person while talking so that hindi fixed yung mata natin habang nakatitig kay coaching. However, if the conversation becomes a little hostile, kunyari pag galit, pag intense yung emotion, ang suggestion ko ay inverted triangle. Binababa natin so that we will not actually capture yung mga intense emotions na nakukuha niya. Kasi kunyari, pag galit yung taong kausap natin, pag tinitigan natin, nararamdaman din natin yung galit. So to temper that anger, we look into the lips rather than focusing directly on the eye. So babalik ta rin lang natin siya from left eye to the lips, going back to the right eye, left eye ole, and then look at the lips. Open language in terms of our body can symbolize honesty and openness. So one way for us to show this is to avoid barriers when it comes to communication. So nakikita po natin open palm, wala pong nakalagay sa lap natin habang nakikipag-usap, it's very important because it symbolizes openness and honesty. Ang iiwasan po natin, yung nakalagay yung palm natin sa likod, nakalagay siya inside our pockets, or we are holding something during our coaching session because there's a tendency for this to show that we are concealing something, we're very busy, or we are not focus on our coaching. Ang cross arms, it's a big no because this is the ultimate body language barrier. Yung closed fist, thumbs up, at yung ganito pong gesture can actually show different meaning. For example, pag closed fist at nakakross arm ka, it can show that you are defensive. Pag naka-thumbs up po naman, dominant. At yung mga nakaganitong cross arms, yung nakikita natin sa teleserye, yung mga malditang kontrabida, it can show that you are possibly insecure, restrained, and negative. So let's avoid doing the cross arms and make sure that during the conversation, open po yung body language. One thing we can watch for during the conversation is if the coachee is doing this particular action. So it can be a signal to you during that conversation. In terms of palm positions, let's also try to be aware of these gestures. When it's open palm, it's okay because it's submissive. Kung palm down naman, it's a bit dominant. And the big no is the pointing finger because it can show that we are aggressive. Evaluation signals during the conversation can be similar to the ones that are being flashed right now. 
yung nakaganito po tayo sa ating shame, okay? We're trying to evaluate what our coach is saying. Avoid lang po natin na we do this because sometimes it can also be interpreted as we are bored. Although, probably you're just doing this because it's a mannerism or you used to that particular action. Lying signals are something that we can also watch for. Like when they keep doing this in their nose, they're rubbing something sa kanilang leeg, sa likod, okay? And they're doing this. These are some signals that we can watch for during the conversation. Avoid po fidgeting when we're doing the coaching session. Sometimes siguro dahil open questions yung tinatanong nyo at mahaba yung sagot ng ating coachee, we keep playing with something like a pen or our cell phone or probably we're tapping something okay, on our seat. So avoid that. That can be very distracting. Lip smacking should also be avoided. Siguro habang may sinasabi si coachee, biglang ginagawa natin yon and it can also prevent the coachee from sharing more details and swaying and rocking while doing the coaching sessions. These are big no-no. An open body language would simply mean we soften the way we communicate. Soften would mean we smile from time to time if needed. We always do open gestures. We face the person. Never turn your back on your coaching. As much as possible, touch should be limited to the handshake or kung hindi pa rin talaga pwede dahil nga pandemic tayo ngayon, no touch. Maintain that eye contact and we can do nodding in terms of agreement. Okay? Now, I'd like to share with you the concept of mirroring and matching. Kung mapapansin niyo po dito sa slide na pinapakita ngayon, yung past U.S. presidents and some of their cabinet members are actually doing that mirroring and matching. Pag sinabing mirroring, ginagaya natin mismo yung tao, yung matching naman may lag lang ng konti. This has been studied over time and the idea is that people will feel most comfortable around those who are similar or like them. And at that point, they feel that they're point of view is understood because of this mirroring and matching. Now, what are the things that we can mirror in order for us to have that certain connection? Number one, yung nonverbal gestures. So make sure that we do open nonverbal gestures. Pwede natin gayahin. So for example, nag-lean forward si Kochi, probably you can also do the same. Kung nag-cross legs, cross legs naman is okay as a, as a gesture because it can show that you are relaxed, we can also do that. Pero careful lang kasi ayaw natin magmukha na parang yung ginagaya-gaya lang natin at iniinis yung tao. Okay? Speech rate. Kung medyo mabagal magsalita si Kochi at ikaw, naturally, you are a fast talker, maybe we can adjust the way we talk. And also the energy level. Di po ba? Kung napakataas ng energy ni Kochi, tapos ikaw medyo mababa yung energy, hindi kayo match. Okay? So mag adjust yung isa po dyan. So maybe these are the things that we can do to connect more with our Kochi. Isipin nyo na lang po kung may dalawang taong nag-uusap, yung isa laging nag-English, yung isa nag-Pilipino. So that's not mirroring and matching. At some point, they will drift away. Katulad din ng kunyari, pupunta ka sa party, lahat naka-formal attire, naka-suit, tapos biglang ikaw nakapambahay or pajama. So you are not similar to them, uuwi ka na lang from that particular party. So that's the concept of mirroring and matching. Now, Deborah Bull mentioned that body language is a very powerful tool. We had body language before we learned how to talk. And apparently, 80% of what we understand in a conversation is read through the body and not the words. Caveat lang po when it comes to interpreting body language because it does not always mean na pag nag-cross arm si Kochi, ah, sasabihin niyo, uy, defensive. Mukhang negative agad yung body language. This could be a signal, so we need to confirm. Okay, So 
ask questions in order to confirm that idea kung yun nga po ba ang ipinapakitang mensahe ng ating coaching. Okay? Hindi po sa black and white na automatic. Kumamot lang ng konti. Ay! Sinungaling po yan. Okay? That's not the way to actually interpret body language. So I hope you learned something from keen observation and I hope that we can use this not just in our coaching session but in our day-to-day -day lives. Maraming salamat po.